everybody. Thank you for joining me for a very late stream on a Friday, no less. You guys are awesome. Thanks for gifting a membership, 80s model. But I was waiting for the details to come out about the uh, deal for the actors, for the actor strike. And it was taking forever. You know, when they're live stream, they had a live stream set for 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I was sitting there waiting for it to start. And I was like, oh, I don't have to feel so bad. Fran Drescher's late to her stream, too. But then it got like ridiculously late. It was like 20 minutes late. And I was like, what the heck's happening with this stream? And uh, Fran Drescher ended up being an hour and 20 minutes late. Thank goodness I've never been that late uh, for a stream. I thought that was crazy. Uh, thanks, Big League Chew. It was a crazy stream. So we're going to go over that. We have some really good juicy stories that broke yesterday. Uh, I was going to go see uh, Trolls 3 tomorrow morning, but instead I'm going to uh, focus on getting out the, um, yeah, thumb holes, woohoo, on getting out the, uh, the, the, the Marvel's uh, end credit scene videos because I want to make sure those are timely. Ah, uh, thanks, Cowboy Kush. That's so nice of you. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's my pleasure, and that, it's, that's very so nice of you. And I'm still going to try and review Trolls 3. Um, I just got my Loki breakdown up, but I'm going to try and review Trolls 3 uh, closer to the, to the release date. I'll go to the first showing on, um, on Thursday night. Well, actually, it's Thursday afternoon. Screenings start like at 2 o'clock. Uh, Nicholas, I'm not going to cover Invincible uh, until the end of Season 2, Part 1. So Thanksgiving weekend, I will put something up to talk about it, just like I did with Gen V, once this group of episodes wraps. It just doesn't have the same interest, uh, and there's just too much going on right now. Uh, Andrew, what are my thoughts about the Inside 2 trailer? Well, I'm going to talk about it a little bit, actually, in this stream, because it, it pertains to one of our stories. Uh, but um, I, don't, I don't like feelings, as you know. So me and Inside Out don't get along. But I recognize that it's an incredibly popular uh, franchise, as was evidenced by the monster performance of the trailer, the biggest launch ever for uh, Pixar. Uh, oh, Drago, I'm so glad you like my shirt. It's new. It's got a rose on it. See, you can't really see that that well, but that's my shirt. I got it from Nordstrom. Uh, Nordstrom has a lot of good shirts, actually. You got to order them through the mail for some reason, although this one I was able to uh, pick up at the store. But anyway, yeah, so I missed a lot of trailer reactions this week. This was a tough week. Uh, I'm, you know, usually, so I'll just do a, like a little bonus story. All right. So this is the hierarchy of how news is supposed to break in the entertainment space. Okay. And when, uh, people don't follow it, when studios don't follow it, it's a mess for all of us who cover it. So the beginning of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is supposed to be trailers, right? Uh, then, and then, uh, I, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm supposed, to be, I'm supposed to see a movie a couple of days before the review embargo lifts. Uh, because of the, all the toxicity around the Marvels, uh, Disney Marvel had the, the press screening at the very last minute. So I only had, uh, I had less than 24, no, I had about 20, a little over 24 hours to turn around. No, 12 hours, 12 hours, 12 hour turnaround on that thing. So that kept me from being able to uh, cover the Ghostbusters trailer. And then the Avatar trailer, uh, I was, I was going to cover it. I was going to at least react to it if they dropped it earlier in the day. But for some reason, Netflix is like, let's drop it at 5 o'clock at night. And you're like, what the F? So it was just very frustrating. So Juan, it's not coming. I'm never going to react to the Avatar teaser trailer. Uh, I will cover the Avatar trailer going forward. Uh, you know, I will certain, I'll even do breakdowns. Uh, but I just don't have the bandwidth you know, to cover the Marvels and uh, Loki uh, and do these live streams. And the actor's strike ended at the same time. I mean, so it's just nuts. All right, so let's get, so, and so, so that's, so it's supposed to be trailers at the beginning of the week. Then the review embargoes left somewhere in there, but we're supposed to have a little bit of time to make those reviews. Then at the end of the week, the movies come out, so that's when we do our reviews and our spoiler reviews and stuff like that. And then, you know, stories are sprinkled throughout there. But it, it's like, that's the way it's supposed to progress. But it has just been nuts. It's just been nuts this week. All right, but that's good. I'm glad stuff's happening. For two months, I'd say ever since the beginning of July when the actor's strike started, it's just been a, a, like a, nothing, a, like a, the Sahara. So it's a good problem to have. 
Uh, Netflix is always, Geek Week should never have been held this week. It was the dumbest thing ever. All right. Uh, but I did like the Avatar trailer. I have to see more. I haven't seen any. I have to see the action, uh, quite frankly, uh, because they only teased it, and I think the bending is going to be what makes or breaks that series. But it looked really good. I, I, it was hard to believe that the creators of Avatar hated it so much that they left the production. So that's got to give you a little bit of pause. You're like, it looks pretty good to me. What would make you leave this show and be like, we don't want our name associated with it at all? You know, Puh, curse on you, you know, Avatar Netflix show. And you're like, really? It looked, it looked really good. All right. So uh, let's, let's get going. All right. So story number one. Boop. Ah, oh, the actor's strike. The actor's strike is done and everybody can go back to work. Uh, until uh, Yahtzee, the, uh, the crew union, uh, likely goes on strike next year. So they better make a lot of movies real fast, and they are really going to try and get things back up and running. So the way these are all sister unions, uh, so the way it works is that they all build off of the last deal that was made. All their deals are connected. I think at least the directors, writers, and actors. I don't know if Yahtzee is involved in that situation. But anyway, SAG was guaranteed to the bare minimum get as good a deal as the writers got. So the writers got at bare minimum as good a deal as the directors got, and then the actors get as good a deal as the writers get, at least. And then the negotiation part of it is to bring the deal up to where the actors want it to be for their specific demands. Oh, thanks for gifting a membership, Junior Pe uh, Pena. So uh, they said that a lot of the smaller things they didn't even try to get. Like they were a little upset about meal breaks, uh, and things like that. But they said, you know, Fran Drescher was taking a long time to get to the point. You know, I mean, uh, you know, this has been a great moment for her and I don't blame her for trying to get out of as much out of it as possible. But at the same time, it's like, what do you think the point of this press conference is, Fran? It's to tell us the points of the deal. She was like, no, it's to tell you my life story. And we're like, all right, buckle up. Uh, all right. So, uh, but she said, you know, that they were a lot of things that they would have liked to have had it addressed and they're going to have to wait three years. Oh, wow, Justin, thank you for gifting so many memberships. They said they're going to have to wait three years and revisit it. But I think that the reason that she said that was to point out that SAG could have held out longer. But they are a good play. They are, uh, they were in good faith and they do care about everybody else getting back to work. So they decided for those smaller things to put a pin in it and to, again, revisit it later. So these are the major things that they negotiated, all right? Or as my friend likes to say, negotiated. I'm like, why do you say? That's the evil way to say negotiate. Uh, all right, so uh, look, Graham White, you are a member. Somebody gifted you a membership. Jerome just gifted a membership. Thanks, Jerome, as always. So yes, this new deal is good for three years, Danny. All right, so let me go through the, the, the big things. And I think they're pretty good, actually. All right? No, they didn't release Adam, ba uh, Adam Byers they didn't, uh, and Mika. They didn't release uh, any graphics. You know, the Writers Guild. It's funny to see the difference in the way the two guilds work. They're very much like the actual people that they represent. The writers wrote out a very nice, uh, you know, spreadsheet, and they published it, and that's how they communicated with everybody. But the actors want to be on camera. So they were front and center with their press conference, and they were all like, we got to get photos. You guys got to get pictures to publish pictures for us. And I just thought that when they wanted to talk more about like how they felt about this, the, the strike and the negotiations, and I think that's really funny. Uh, like, you can't name one person who negotiated the Writers Guild deal. Maybe that guy, what, like Adam explains it all or something? Like, you kind of know about him. But everybody knows the two acting people, right? Fran Drescher and this uh, Duncan Crabtree Ireland guy. I know him now, too. Everybody knows. But it was just very funny to see how the two different unions uh, act. And, and in fact, Fran and uh, Duncan got so wrapped up in their emotions that they forgot to really address the points of the deal. And when they opened up the, the press conference to questions, the first question, somebody was like, could you tell us what your AI deal is? And they were like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Here you go. But first, we'll talk about that because that is beautiful. So first, we'll get to that last. There's really only two things that I think are of note that are worth discussing. The first is the monetary uh, 
gain in terms of uh, a 7% raise in most minimums. So for those of you who aren't aware, one of the things that the Screen Actors Guild and all guilds secure is a bare minimum pay. So that it's like a minimum wage, but in these uh, areas. So an actor must be paid a certain amount per day. It's non-negotiable because the unions negotiated it. So 7% raise in most minimums. So that's real nice. Then, this was interesting, I thought. Now, Fran Drescher is like, the Guild needs money. SAG needs money. We have a ton of actors who are unemployed or who, aren't, who can barely make uh, ends meet, even though they are employed uh, so, or they do work sporadically. So SAG needs more money. So first she said, I want 2% of all streaming revenue, which is like $500 million. And the studio said, no way in hell, Fran, you're crazy. Uh, then she said, okay, 1%. I want one, maybe that was the 500 million. She's like, I want 1% of all uh, uh, streaming revenue. And they said, go to hell. And then uh, she said, okay, how about you pay me 57 cents per subscriber? And they were like, we will let the strike go on forever, Fran. So this is what they came up with. So uh, everybody gets residuals based on uh, their deal. So everybody has a deal for a lot of actors and writers and directors get residuals, you know, participation in the back end. Now, the problem has been, what about once the show goes to streaming? And there is no additional revenue, but it's very successful. How do you compensate the talent associated in front of and behind the camera? Oh, thank you, Lawson, for gifting a membership. So they decided that the, the writers for the top streaming shows, like basically the top 20% performing streaming shows, they will give uh, the residuals plus a 50% bonus to the writers. That's what the writers negotiated. So what the actors negotiated was a 100% uh, increase on their residuals. However, the actor in question doesn't get all of it. So 75% of that increased residual goes to the actor, but 25% goes into a joint fund, which is organized and run by SAG and the studios together, and they decide and oversee how to distribute that to the rest of the actors, not all actors, but anyone who's currently working in streaming services. So even if your show doesn't get into the top 20% of streaming shows, performing streaming shows, you still will get a little bit of money because uh, they're going to have, like, they're going to uh, share the wealth, literally. So I think that's interesting. I wonder how the actors feel about it who have to give up 25% of their residuals. But hey, it's tw they're still getting 25% more than the writers. So that's a pretty good deal. That's right, Aaliyah. This is a lot of math, which is why you have an agent and a manager and a lawyer and for some people an accountant to make sure you get paid. Because you're like, my God, this is complicated. Uh, and so apparently this is already a system that the Screen Actors Guild has in place for music and commercials. I don't know what music has to do with actors, but apparently it does. Maybe music videos. So they're like, let's apply this to streaming. And everybody decided that was a good idea. All right, so that's that. All right, now let's talk about AI. This is pretty interesting. All right, so this is, I think this is actually a very good deal. So, and, but they did preface it by saying it's really up to legislators, in other words, the government, to get in AI oversight, to protect intellectual property rights and the rights to one's likeness. Uh, and they said, this, they said the Screen Actors Guild can't really negotiate that. So that's something that the government overall is going to have to put into law. And because Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 scared Joe Biden when he saw it because it heavily features artificial intelligence, maybe we'll get that legislation. As Joe Biden already started uh, to work on that, uh, he put in an executive order on AI because he got freaked out. He was like, wow, that's scary stuff. I better sign something. Uh, that's right. So Jerome just mentioned the executive order. I think they're working their way towards it, but I don't think it's quite there yet. Somebody should show Joe Biden Terminator. That's right, Heather. Uh, I mean, Denzel, right? Uh, always nice to see you, Heather. Uh, Heather says there's already a Supreme Court class on this case, I think you mean, as far as an actor's likeness. Well, I don't know. With today's court, I don't know if it's going to go in the actor's favor. Uh, hey, Reflection, uh, I feel like... Uh, I don't know how sympathetic they're going to be to actors. I mean, it seems pretty open and shut to me, 
But, you know, let's see. Although, and to be fair, I think the Supreme Court has been on the right side of some decisions, so I, they got that going for them. All right, so what did, what did SAG get? Ah, oh, thanks, Lily. So what did SAG get? So SAG, first off, they said, this is, so they did it on two fronts, background extras and being digitally scanned, and then also artificial performers. Oh, that one's particularly interesting. All right, but we'll start with background talent. So they got, um, there must be informed consent and compensation to scan an, a background actor and to use that scan. However, you cannot get that uh, permission when you take the scan up front. You can only get it when you're going to actually use the scan. And that not only f that will allow and force the studios to give a detailed description, uh, and they have to, of what they're going to do with the duplicate. Uh, they can't ask for boilerplate approval. They can't go to a background actor and say, here, we'll give you $500 for your scan, and you just give us th the rights forever to use it. They are not allowed to ask for that. They have to say, all right, we scanned you, we paid you, and now we want your permission, or I guess they'll pay them when they ask for the permission because they need that carrot, but we want to use it for this movie where you were a background extra, and we need to put you into scenes for CGI where we need to have the same extras when we did stuff like that. And also we did some reshoots, and we didn't want to bring you back, but now we have to pay you because we're admitting it. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, so I like that a lot. And also, they can't use artificial intelligent duplicates to avoid hiring background actors. Uh, so that's really good too. They can only use it for post, really, for VFX and stuff like that. So they have to still uh, do what they're supposed to. So I think that's great. Uh, all right, then uh, they talked about artificial performers. Uh, and, I, cause, uh, and they said Fran Drescher in particular championed this and made sure that it was part of this deal. So I have to say, as poorly as she might have handled today's press conference, you got to give her credit for getting this in. So SAG, and I think this is scary because I didn't know it was this close, SAG is extremely concerned about studios and virtual, uh, you know, VFX companies creating an artificial performer. So these are the three things that they got to protect against that. One, you must get consent from the performers whose features you're using to create the artificial performer. So even if you're just like, I just took your left nostril, doesn't matter. You need to get the permission of that performer. So that's the one thing, all right? Uh, I'm like, can't you just create it from scratch? I guess AI can't do that, right? Two, studios must tell the Screen Actors Guild about any artificial intelligent performers they create. Even if they try and get it past the general public, and I don't, I don't know if SAG will allow that, SAG must know. SAG's willing to play, though. SAG will play the game, so we'll see what they decide to do. But SAG at least has to know. And then three is, SAG has the right to negotiate pay for performers who are used to create the artificial intelligent performer. So if they used your left nostril, this gots to pay you. And they probably got to pay you every time they use the artificial actor. And so at some point you're like, is it really worth creating the artificial actor? Because I still got to pay all these other, these actors in real life. So I think that's fascinating. And I think that's a pretty good deal. And I'm glad that the studios agreed to it. But so that's, that's what the Screen Actors Guild negotiated or negotiated. And I'm very happy for them. And I'm very glad we can all get back to work. And also you, can, you saw an immediate change in actors being able to promote their work. Um, you know, even this morning or yesterday morning, I think it was, uh, Ryan uh, Reynolds was already promoting Deadpool 3 by releasing a picture of uh, uh, Dogpool. Uh, and I was like, I was like, you got to stop leaning on the uh, Disney can't handle it. You're, you're so edgy. Disney can't handle you. I'm like, yeah, didn't they improve in our rating? I'm sure they're fine with all of this. Uh, all right. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this story before we move to the next one? That's right, Jerome. I think they had a week before they lost, uh, you know, the Screen Actors Guild before everybody just turned on them. So I think they were right to give up on the smaller things and just settle on these very important uh, descriptions, uh, you know, deal points. Ricardo says, what is the better deal, SAG or the Writers Guild? That's a good question. I mean, they did have very different things that they were looking out for, 
But I, you can't argue that SAG got a little bit of a better deal because they get 100% of the res residuals, 75% for talent instead of the 50% the Writers Guild gets, and then the union gets that 20, extra 25% for themselves and to help their other members. So, I mean, that's pretty good. Hey, Drago, New York City, thank you for gifting a membership. Faisal says, any status on the Fantastic Four casting? Well, you might have seen that scoop that somebody put out that it maybe it will be next week. Uh, I think it's fair game as early as the beginning of next week. Uh, I'm pretty busy at the top of the week, so I hope it's the end of next week. But basically, uh, the issue is that uh, I think they don't want to crowd Loki in the Marvels. I mean, they don't need to. It was already stupid they released those two things on the same day. Uh, why throw uh, Fantastic Four on top of all that? Oh, wow, Giancarlo. That's nuts. 50 memberships. So generous of you. Wow. And Not Modern Painter, thank you also for gifting a membership. Oh, and thanks, Tennessee. Oh, you guys are so kind. Thank you. I really appreciate it, especially because it's so grueling right now, and it's going to be really tough through uh, right up until Thanksgiving. Uh, hey, Blair Ray, thanks for, thanks, for, uh, thanks for coming back. Same for you, Quandra Williams. Uh, all right, so that's, that's a lot of memberships. That was very, very generous of you, uh, Giancarlo. And also Not Modern Painter, even one membership is appreciated. And then Tennessee Shad, again, that was very kind of you. Uh, Vachuli says, is there any third party to control the new rules being enforced? What is the possible punishment? Well, I think SAG could sue. SAG could sue them because it's a contract. It's a deal. And so they could sue them for sure. And so that's the, that's the issue. Steven says, I'm happy the strike ended and now Amon can enjoy the release of the Marvel. Saw she, uh, oh yeah, Amon Vellani. I'm very happy for her. Although, I, I mean, I hope she's not going online. Although I think most people are, I mean, even the, only the Grinchiest of Grinches can't admit that she does a great job. Hey, Joey, thanks for gifting a membership. Uh, Vincent, I'm happy that the strike ended as well. Danny, I haven't personally heard about a female Silver Surfer, but I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. I would think at some point, Marvel and Disney and Star Wars would be like, you know, are we just becoming a parody of ourselves? Uh, but apparently that, that point hasn't hit yet. Or maybe it has, considering all the delays. All right, let's get on that note. That's a perfect lead up to the next story, okay? Boop. Oh, all right. So post-strike, it's official. Delay City, baby. Uh, but there were still some really big surprises in this. Uh, the biggest is that Captain America, well, here, I'll put up the dates. So Marvel actually released a press release, which is unusual for them, uh, saying their new dates. Or maybe I just don't usually see it. But anyway, everybody had thought, myself included, that Captain America Brave New World would be moving up to take the May release date from Deadpool 3, since it had, of course, I like they're calling Deadpool untitled. I'm like, might be, why don't you just call it Deadpool 3? Might it be called something else? Uh, just call it Deadpool 3, please. It's better for the metadata. All right, so, I mean, maybe they can come up with a funny subtitle, but uh, call it Deadpool 3. Let's do a poll about what it should be called. Hold on. I know you guys like the polls. What should they call Deadpool 3? Uh, duh, Deadpool 3. Deadpool 3 with subtitle. And like uh, Captain America Brave New World. That's just Captain America 4, man. Or Deadpool uh, with title, with subtitle. So those are the choices. Okay. You can vote on that while we talk. Although, you're right, Deadpool saves the Marvel Universe. Damn it, I wish I'd seen that. That's pretty good. But I still think it should be. Yeah, that's pretty good. Hmm. Darn it. Let me redo the poll. Sorry. That's too good for me not to include. Hold on. Okay. Ignore that. What should Deadpool 3 be called? Deadpool 3. Deadpool 3 with subtitle. Deadpool uh, saves the Marvel Universe. There we go. Because that's a pretty darn good title. I'm like, there it is. Uh, let's see. But I mean, for metadata, I would like to be called Deadpool 3. It would just make my life a lot easier. But that's okay. All right, so... 
Uh, shockingly, though, Captain America 4, even though it has wrapped shooting for, for over a month now and was supposed to be in post-production, well, it's been delayed a frickin' year to uh, February, well, not a full, well, like over a year from now, February 14th, 2025. And word on the street is, it's like Daredevil. Kevin Feige watched it and went, went, yikes, and decided to redo it. I think that's hilarious. I think Harrison Ford, let me bring up his photo. Harrison Ford, he is like, he doesn't even like making these blockbusters. How is he going to feel now that he's in the land of reshoots? He's like, are we just going to remake the movie? And they're like, yeah. And he's like, I didn't even want to do it the first time. So I think that's hilarious. I'm surprised it's that bad considering it features Harrison Ford and a ton of hulks. But I guess it is that bad. I mean, look how happy they are. I mean, that's amazing to me that they're so happy. And maybe they're pointing and they're like, can you believe how bad this is? And he's like, I can't either. And Harrison Ford's like, I sure can. This isn't my first rodeo, kid. All right, so, yeah, but it looks like Disney gave up the May release date, but they still, they still put a pin in it, and then we'll talk about these other delays, but they still put a pin in it, okay, and there's still now an untitled Disney movie is supposed to come out, like, May 3rd, uh, and I, w- I, would, I would think another studio would swoop in there and take it, but I guess they're worried about what Disney might put there. And I'll tell you what I would put there if I were Disney. Let's see if they do it in the next few uh, days. Inside Out 2! Because they just announced today that it was the biggest trailer debut ever for a, a Disney, I think, I don't I think it might be all animation, but 157 million views. I don't know how they calculate it. I mean, there's autoplay on Twitter. I'm not sure about this, but whatever. So Snow White, Danny's already been delayed over a year as well. I don't know if, you know, if to 2025. Snow White's also coming out in 2025. So is Elio. So they, they, I think the only thing they really have is Inside Out 2. They could put Planet of the Apes there, which is set for Memorial Day weekend at the end of the month. But I don't think Planet of the Apes is strong enough to kick off the summer. I mean, I thought that trailer looked pretty good, but it didn't look May 3rd good. I mean, Inside Out, and again, I don't even like Inside Out 2. I was like, there aren't any emotions in my head that look like that. Uh, But good for Maya Hawke, though. That's really nice for her. But I certainly acknowledge that everybody's excited about it, so they should put that there. Uh, Mary Lynn, uh, Mufasa, good good idea to, to move it up, but unfortunately they did move back Mufasa as well, which was supposed to come out for the 4th of July weekend, but they gave it the December 20th date, which is the Star Wars Avatar space that Thunderbolts was supposed to go in. Uh, And now uh, that's when Mufasa is going to come out. I got to tell you, that seems like a weird date for Mufasa to me. I think maybe they're hoping that there will be like Avatar, right? But I think Mufasa was a perfect 4th of July movie. I mean, I don't know how I feel about Mufasa uh, at Christmas time. Uh, Abul says, what are the chances recent events in the Middle East play a role in the delay of Captain America 4? They have an Israeli superhero. I think that's potentially the case. Uh, I think some people are saying that she's not an Israeli superhero, but she is played by an Israeli actress, and she's based on an Israeli character. So, I mean, everybody's going to know what the character is. I don't really know how they can... I, don't, I mean, I don't know how they can change it without recasting her, and that is another problem. So I think they just have to, to deal with it. Tiff says, got an email that I received a gifted membership, so I had to pop in. Oh, I love it, Tiff. Welcome back. Uh, all right. I did not like, somebody asked me about Inside Out. I did not like Inside Out. I actually hate that movie. I tried recently to rewatch it when I was on an airplane. I was like, everybody loves this movie. And I didn't, I watched, I wanted to watch a Disney movie. So I was like, I've seen every other Disney movie a gajillion times. So, okay, I'll watch this. And I was, I couldn't do it. Like the beginning was okay, like for a little bit, but then I was like, I just can't take it. It's too much being in touch with your feelings. I can't stand it. I was raised to just keep going. So it's really hard for me to be like, ah, feelings. It's just, it's my own hangup. I hated Bing Bong, Danny. I was so ridiculously sad. I was like, why does anybody die in someone's brain? Can't you just imagine him again? All right, so let me end the poll really quick, and then we'll talk about the Marvel stuff. What should Deadpool 3 be called? Well, 55% of you agree with me. Deadpool Saves the Marvel Universe is a pretty great title. Uh, 28% want just Deadpool 3, whereas 15% are okay with something right below Deadpool 3. Uh, But I'm surprised. You know, Deadpool 3 still got 45% overall, so that's pretty good. 
Uh, let's see here. Okay. All right, so let me go over these uh, delays, okay? So Deadpool has been moved to the old Captain America 4 date, July 26th, 2024. I don't love that date for them. As I said, it could really open whenever it wants to, but eh, end of July, I don't know. I'm not, I don't love it, but I guess that's when they feel it's going to be ready. As I said in my Loki breakdown, I wouldn't be surprised if they were rewriting it a little bit based on the Jonathan Major situation uh, and also just the TVA kind of being up in the air. Uh, I think maybe they might want to straighten a couple of things out if I were them. Uh, and I mean, I don't know what they're going to do with the X-Men because as somebody said, nobody's really making that big a deal about the end credit scene in the Marvels. And that's craziness. All right, then Captain America Brave New World has been pushed back to uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day in 2025. I'm Like what? Like that, how, who's like a lot of guys are going to be like, come on, honey, don't you want to see Captain America four for Valentine's day? Also, I've told you before that going, um, that going to the movies on Valentine's day was one of the worst experiences I ever had. I went to, with my family to see die, like the last die hard. And we went on Valentine's day. We thought it would be fun to go to the movies on Valentine's day. It was awful. Some drunk women behind us. I think they got sold out of the movie they wanted to see. And they were just a disaster. They were shouting at the screen and they were just so wasted. I, I, I just, I think it's crazy to come out on July, I mean on February 14th. Especially because this is not a romantic movie whatsoever. I don't even think Captain America 4 has a love interest. I mean, I know that uh, Betty Ross is supposed to come back, but it just, that just seems, maybe, maybe she and Bruce Banner will go on a date and they'll be like, wink, it's Valentine's Day. Uh, all right, then Thunderbolts, previously dated for that 20th, December 20th date, moves to late July 2025. This is getting nuts. I mean, like, when is Avengers Secret Wars and Kang Dynasty going to come out? Like, we're getting, like, to the late 2020s here. Uh, and then Blade, uh, they're like, we're still making Blade. And everybody's like, are you? And they're like, yes, we are. So Blade is supposed to, was supposed to come out on Valentine's Day, which was also stupid. Uh, and then it's now moved, as one of you said, to right after Halloween, uh, 2025. I agree. That's absolutely ridiculous that it comes out right after Halloween. Like, why not make that? The, I mean, they said they want to make it R and scary. Why not release it for Halloween weekend? Or the weekend, or like the weekend right before Halloween. So, I mean, I told you that's uh, October 31st that year, and that's not great. But I mean, it is maybe great because, you know, everybody would go on Friday, but then it's still Halloween weekend and Blade isn't that Halloween-y. Uh, hey, Brian, happy birthday. I'm glad you saw the Marvels and you and, um, and you had a good time. That's awesome. All right. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this before we get to the third story of the day? Bye, Cat Shack. Thanks for spending your break with us. Ariel Knight says the first Deadpool came out on Valentine's Day and did very well. That's true, um, but I think that, you know, Ryan Reynolds really leaned into that. Um, and I, I just, you know, considering how the Marvels is faring, and everybody's already saying bad stuff about Captain America 4, and you're like, are we going to do this again? I mean, let's just see. Nick Dean says, can we just skip Kang Dynasty and go straight to Secret Wars? I agree, Nick. I, I don't see any reason to do Kang Dynasty at this point. That's right, Steven. We did the Halloween release strategy just on Movie Math on Sunday. Sean Turner says, I hope Mia Goth stays on for Blade. She's great. But maybe she would save herself if she ran away. Riley Steele says, hey, Grace, aside from Deadpool 3, what other Marvel project has the most potential? Well, I thought Captain America 4 with all those, uh, with all those hulks running around, but apparently it's, it's garbage. So bad that even Kevin, F I mean, he watched it and said, I can't release this. <laughs> and he's watched a lot of other stuff that he has released. So how bad must it have been? I think the next big thing is going to be Daredevil. I think people are very excited about Daredevil. And considering they brought the directors for the Loki season finale over to that show and how good the season finale is of Loki, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Denzel, nobody knows where White Vision is. It's ridiculous. This is just taking forever. Steven says no one really cares about the specific... A uh, character that cameoed in Marvels had it been a more... Oh, I disagree, Stephen. I'll talk about it in my video tomorrow. 
Salvador also had a good time seeing the Marvels today. Oh, I'm very happy to hear that. You might not believe bad rumors anymore about movies tabs, and that's great. But I think the problem is, is they are affecting the general public. Mac, and I got to tell you, I thought the ad campaign for the Marvels was awful. I mean, I don't blame people for being reluctant to go. It was a real leap of faith. I mean, I had to go because it was for work. I never would have seen that movie if I didn't have to go for work. Certainly not in the theater. Max says, nobody is making a big deal about the Marvels after credit scenes because nobody cares about the Marvels. Mm, well, it's such a good end credit scene, though. It makes me sad. Uh, let's see here. Liam is a big Mia Goth fan as well. So is Franco. A lot of Mia Goth fans. Let's see. 80s model says, well, we're not, let's not, don't spoil anything, everybody. Do you have any questions about these stories, this story in particular? Uh, there's going to be a Q&A at the end, and if you're worried about spoilers, you might want to jump off for that. CJ, it's already 8.38. I can't, I'm going to write the videos out tonight and then get up super early in the morning on a Saturday. That's how much I love you guys uh, and want to talk about this with you and to do that coverage. I hope Marvel never does this again putting everything on the same day. Lord Baratheon says, maybe it's a good thing that Cap 4 is being reworked from scratch. I mean, maybe. And then Middle Kid says, using the action figure metaphor for Kevin Feige, I think he's realizing it's hard to keep audiences hooked once you reveal all the toys. Well, I think he should have just focused on a few toys at a time and then built them out. I think that him just doing all the toys at once was like really bad because people are like, well, what, what, are we going to do anything with that? And everyone, he's like, no. And you're like, what? Let's see here. Damien, Secret Wars is supposed to be about um, gathering all these different versions of heroes from different multiverses to create, to either, I've heard two things. One is either to say, I heard to save them you know, like a Noah's Ark situation. And I know a lot of other scoopers have heard the same thing. Although now another scooper is floating out the idea that they're a multiversal army. But as I said in my Loki breakdown, well, then what's the point of Secret Wars if you're going to have those people in Kang Dynasty? I mean, it just seems really stupid. Poke says, if Inside Out 2 moves to May, then what moves to June? Well, I think they can let that release date go, Poke. Disney doesn't need the June release date. I think they want to, they want to kick off the summer. Ah, thanks, Marcus. I love you, too. You guys are so nice. Thanks, Jewel Rodriguez. Ah. Let's see here. I see all the love. I feel all the love. Thank you. Blair Wraith says, I love how Marvel just pretended Eternals doesn't exist. That's right. Where are all those people? Remember Harry Styles? That's so funny. I mean, I don't think he's ever coming back. And then Matt says, we needed to get an, uh, a new team of Avengers, not introduce tons of characters we hardly ever see. Couldn't agree more. And then Jesse the Good Witch just got out of the Marvels and loved it. Yeah, it's a fun movie. I mean, I, I, I didn't say I loved it, but I certainly enjoyed it. I had a good time. And then M Mickey says, Grace, do you ever, th Mikey says, do you ever think we'll get to see Darcy and Jimmy again in an MCU film or show? You know, it's anyone's guess because they have, now they have not only a ton of main characters and supporting characters, but they have a lot of like supporting, supporting. So you're like, because now we're like, where's Mobius? What about all the characters from the TVA? Are we going to see them again? And it's like, I'm sure, I'm sure Jimmy and uh, Darcy are like, get in line. That's right, Danny. Where the heck's Gaia from Secret Invasion? Hopefully never coming back. Uh, you're going to get up early too, Franco? That's okay. You can sleep in on Saturday. You know, I, I, want, I want you to have that. Ariel Knights is my friend said, with movies like the Marvels, you have to apply the, t uh, the, 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 the black tax whatever the, that the score to get it gets you have to add 20 percent i don't know what you're saying ariel it sounds vaguely not good okay let's see here Do, 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 do. Hey, Simmy, I'm glad you made the live stream. Good luck with your LSAT score. Mm. 
Okay, let's move on to the next story. That's right, Adam. I don't think, I think people, oh, thank you, Saito. I think people are ready for the next story. Okay. All right, hold on. Story number three. Boom, baby. Oh, no, I covered up poor John Cena. All right, you can't see him. He's like, oh, you don't even see me back here. All right, let's talk about this story. This is a good, juicy story. All right, so let's see here. Travis says Darcy and Jimmy should reunite at the TVA. It's getting nuts here, man. All right, so anyway. So David Zaslav has done it again. After shelving Batgirl for a $90 million tax write-off, he has now shelved Coyote vs. Acme, which was already also being screened for test, you know, test screen for audiences, and he's only getting $30 million write-off for it. That's like nothing. He, I mean, it's really, it's crazy. He's saying he's getting tax write-offs, but you know what? I'll say it here. I feel what David Zaslav is really doing is pioneering a new Hollywood where movies can be shelved despite being almost complete. That is almost, that almost never happens. And I think someone's going to have to sue him, uh, quite frankly. It's quite frankly number two, uh, like Scarlett Johansson did with the Disney Plus uh, uh, simultaneous release of, of Black Widow, uh, you know, during the pandemic. So that's the only way I think you're going to be able to handle this because it's, it's pretty amazing. Jerome says, could be argued he's pushing for quality. Well, here's where it gets really interesting, Okay. Now, you might be like, why is James Gunn included in this story? Well, James Gunn is the, not only helped do the story for this, but he is a producer on Coyote vs. Acme based on this, uh, I think it's either a book or, a, I think it's a book. But James Gunn, is a, is, this is his movie. This is his baby. And the fact that David Zaslav wouldn't just be like, you can, you can have it. Like, why not give it to him? Like, is it an issue of taste? And then is David Zaslav going to have that same issue maybe going forward? Oh, he's, Liam says, what's it about? Well, for those of you who don't know, Coyote versus Acme is about Wiley Coyote suing the Acme Corporation uh, because the Acme products never work. Uh, and he, he and his lawyer go up against the head of the Acme company, who is played by John Cena, which I think is pretty good casting. Although, guess what? The lawyer for Wiley Coyote is played by Will Forte. And I think you might have why the movie got canned. I mean, I think they are worried a little bit about their brand, and I wouldn't want Will Forte standing next to it. I mean, I like Will Forte. I think he's actually a pretty good actor. He was in Sweet Tooth, the Sweet Tooth's dad, and he broke my heart. But I don't want to put Will Forte in a major movie, and I don't know why they would hire Will Forte. That's got James Gunn written all over it. I'm like, there's no, I mean, for who to play the actor, you could get anybody. I mean, the lawyer? You could get anybody. And that's right, Alexander uh, Padilla. Lana Condor is in the movie as well. But Lana Condor is great. People love Lana, Can uh, Lana Condor. But I'd be nervous about Will Forte. I mean, maybe he did a great job, but I don't know, you know, am I really going to release a movie starring John Cena and Will Forte? That sounds like direct to streaming. And they could have put this on streaming. It had very good uh, test scores, uh, and uh, everybody who's associated with it said they love, it was a labor of love, and they're extremely proud of it. And David Zaslav, Zaslav said, I don't care. CJ, Will Forte is um, MacGruber. SMR Goose also doesn't know who Will Forte is. My goodness. This is why they don't want him anywhere near the movie. He's MacGruber, and the MacGruber movie was pretty good. But nobody went to see it because it starred Will Forte. Like, that's the problem with Will Forte. Will Forte just can't do good enough of a job, unfortunately. Uh, all right, so uh, Warner Brothers wouldn't release this in theaters. They wouldn't put it on Max. I think, like, why not? Uh, and they wouldn't shop it around. They were like, it, people are like, you could put it on another streaming service, just like you are with your Batman stuff, some of your Batman stuff. And Warner Brothers said, no, it's not even worth the effort. We're just, we want our $30 million. And that to me is really surprising. So as I said, I think this is also, it's got to also be partially about, um, you know, being able to do this going forward where you can shelve a movie that's almost complete, which in the past has been taboo in Hollywood. You, you just roll the dice. And, and that's what, I mean, can you imagine how many movies wouldn't get really, I mean, look at Kevin Feige. He's reshooting stuff instead of scrapping it. Uh, Although some of you are saying he should consider scrapping some of the projects, but he's not going to scrap Daredevil, right? And I think he can't scrap uh, Sam Wilson's Captain America debut. 
I mean, he'll never hear the end of it. It would be an absolute disaster for him. Uh, although everybody was upset when Leslie Grace, as a Latina uh, Batgirl, got her movie shelved, and everyone said it was an injustice. Uh, but yet everybody, nobody cares who says anything about it. I mean, people have vilified David Zaslav, but it's just like a general cloud of vilification. So it's pretty rough. So does anybody have any questions about this? Ah, uh, thanks, Poke. I mean, I personally, I haven't seen the film, but I would really, it would be hard for me not to put it on Max. I think it would do incredibly well on Max. I wouldn't put it in theaters with Will Forte. I wouldn't have allowed Will Forte to be cast. I was talking to a friend of mine recently in the industry, and I was surprised at how much uh, free reign uh, creative talent is allowed to have, and the studios let them do whatever they want. Uh, I'll tell you in the context, and I can't tell you exactly what it was, It's because it's just too big. I, I, it's, I can't. I'll get the, my source in trouble. But um, apparently the showrunner is allowed to choose whatever writers they want to work on their show. And you would think the studio would have to approve them. But apparently, no. The studio just hires the showrunner, and then the showrunner is the one who hires the writers that work under them to write out the rest of the series. That's nuts to me. I'd be like, sure, you can pick them, but I got to approve, I got to sign off on them. Steven Turner says, do you think big enough stars and actors and directors will start putting it in their contracts to protect their films from, I don't think they could put that in their contracts, Steven. Uh, I think it would be really hard to do. Uh, I think, I think you'd have to go the legal route instead. And I think you'd have to sue. Uh, Franco, look at you trying to stir up trouble. Jesse the Good Witch says, I'm surprised the DGA didn't fight for uh, Scrapped. The DGA didn't fight for anything. Everyone's been making fun of him for that. I don't care, Bear says, Gun must be sweating. Warner Brothers might just end up stringing him along for the, until the Universal sale. Well, let's see. He hasn't rolled camera yet on Superman Legacy. Uh, I don't think he's going to roll camera on anything else before the, before the sale. And that makes perfect sense to me. Let's see him prove himself with Superman Legacy and I guess Creature Commandos. Uh, but, you know, I, if I were James Gunn, I'd be nervous. He is such a high profile person at the studio and this is such an inexpensive film. Why not just release it to let him save face? Popcorn Roulette said, everyone is gearing up for Superman Legacy here in Atlanta. That's exciting. All right, let's go to the Q&A. I think you guys are done with this. <laughs> I can tell when you're done. Okay, hold on. All right, let me do the Q&A correctly this time. Okay, Q&A time. I've, you got me for 10 minutes until, uh, until nine o'clock. Mr. Magic, I'm very sorry to hear about your cousin Eric's passing. Um, I'm glad that we can uh, brighten your spirits a little bit. CWJ128 says, Hi, Grace. Have you ever thought of having a 30-minute call with one, some of your fans for charity? Someone like Charity Buzz would do that. Oh, I never thought of that. Uh, somebody asked me today if I was on Cameo, and I was considering whether or not I should go on Cameo. Uh, I have to think about it. I mean, my schedule's really packed, so I don't... But, you know, no, maybe, maybe no one will care. Maybe I'll be like, wow, nobody wants a Cameo. That problem solved itself. Uh, but, you know, I'm considering it. Let's see. Welm says, do you think James Gunn keeps his position after Warner Brothers is sold to Universal? Uh, it depends on whether or not um, Superman Legacy comes out and whether or not it's a hit. Uh, but I would think Universal would want to start from scratch. Lloyd Le and get their own person in there. Lloyd Lester says, Grace, what are your thoughts on the Marvels aiming for the MCU's lowest domestic opening? I think it's movie math's going to be a fun time on Sunday, boy. Sean Turner says, thoughts on Amy Pascal joining Greta Gerwig's Narnia. They made Little Women together, so let them do whatever they want. I thought Little Women was one of the best movies I've ever seen. I love that. And now it's one of my Christmas wa uh, watches. I put it on my Christmas rotation, and I just love that film. So I think that's great news. 
Carter B says, did you see that the Barbie album took almost all the spots for best song and visual media at the Grammys? Four out of the five spots were taken up. Only Rihanna could compete. Well, I'm not surprised. Rihanna is awesome. Uh, but that's great. I love Barbie. I'm so happy. I want to see I'm Just Ken win best song. Let's see here. Doc Hayes, I have not had any time to watch any Blue Samurai. My to watch list is like nuts. Uh, Carter James says, just wanted to say hi. I love the thumb holes. Oh, ah, yay. I'm glad you like my thumb holes, Carter. Uh, hey, Ricardo. Let's see here. Danny, I'm not going to review uh, The Killer. I just, I, there's not enough interest in it, and I just don't have the time. Uh, Galliot Production says, any Superman tea? I haven't heard anything recently. Uh, Hollywood's still getting back up on its feet. I think it'll take about a week or so. Love uh, my thoughts on the Avatar teaser trailer. As I said at the top of the stream, I thought it was very well done and I thought it was very epic and impressive, but I need to say, see full-on bending to really get an idea as to whether or not this is going to work. Oh, Andrew, I'm glad you think Cameo is a good idea. Thank you. Vincent says, oh, Harley Quinn Dove says, watching the Marvels tomorrow, IMAX or Dolby? I saw it in IMAX, and I thought the picture looked fantastic, so I would recommend IMAX. It's got all these space sequences. I think that would be great. Vincent P. says, hey, Grace, I saw your tweet, but I was curious if you had any further or more in-depth thoughts about the Airbender trailer. Uh, I'm so glad you, I mean, so, I feel so guilty when I can't react to this stuff. It just, I, it, and also, that's not good, because it sends me into, like, a tailspin, and that kind of slows me down. I'm like, oh, I'm not getting anything done. I mean, I get, I'm like, I'm disappointing people and I just get sad. And then, so it's not great. But I'm, I'm so, but thank you. I'm so happy that you want to hear my thoughts on it. Um, I really liked it. I thought it looked in many ways ripped from the animation. And that was to me very exciting. Riley still says, hey, Grace, why is Poison Ivy not in any DC movies these days? Everyone loves her. Uh, well, Riley, you say that she, her powers, need, but I think that's the issue. I think that they, she goes too much to like a mutant. And I think they're like, how are we going to explain her ability to control how plants move? And you're like, it's like, you're overthinking it, man. She makes plants move, whatever. Uh, but I, and I also think that now she needs to be introduced with, you know, Harley Quinn. And, you know, maybe if Lady Gaga is really successful with the Joker too, she might bring in Poison Ivy. If anyone can do it, it's Lady Gaga. Popcorn Roulette says, are you going to review the killer? No, somebody, as you know, saw, somebody just asked that. Uh, Jesse the Good Witch. No, as we were discussing, nothing has taken the first weekend in May, but I think that it's probably going to, I would, my money would be on Inside Out too. Oh, I'm glad to see the support for the cameo thing. Maybe I'll do it. FC said, Grace, did you see that Warner Brothers, I, there, I've not seen a Warner Brothers buying Paramount rumor. That makes no sense. But I appreciate you bringing it up. Yeah, Franco, it's so nice. So many people are with us on a Friday night. I really appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Bay McCullough. It's always so nice to see you. Sean Turner says, will you be reviewing Saltburn? I don't think so. I'm going to do something after uh, Christmas with, award, with the award season. It's something new. Because, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I don't want to tell you about it until I do it. Uh, also because I don't know if I'm 100% going to do it. But I'm 99% going to do it. So we'll talk about that then. D. Williams says, do you think that the MCU should pivot to X-Men and Fantastic Four after Secret Wars? I don't know. I think some of these characters are okay. Uh, Briz, I'm seeing Napoleon on Tuesday, and I will review it on Wednesday. Hey, BC. Oh, you guys are all very kind. Thank you. John Thrasher says, with Blade uh, on 1125, no sign of Fantastic Four anywhere. I guess Fantastic Four and Kang Dynasty in 2026? That would be nuts if they announced the casting for Fantastic Four and their movie doesn't even come out for three years. Oh, that's nuts. I'll Watch says, had me a day. Just watched Priscilla. Had the whole theater to myself. What a great time. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. I've heard some, some people, they didn't care for the film, but that's pretty nice. You got a private screening. Uh, Ebb the Blue, that's very kind of you to say. I really appreciate that. And then Carmelo says, do you think actors will go back to press for content releasing on streaming, like Barbie and the Marvels later on? No, I think, for, well, I don't know what they're going to do about the Marvels, um, although Brie Larson, I think, is going on late night television. Uh, but for Barbie, I think they're going to be focusing on the awards campaign right now. 80s model, I've seen all of Invincible. I've seen through episode four. It's incredible. 
Let's see here. Wiki Nomad says, thank you for getting this BTC late night special together so fast. Must have been tough. I think this calls for a chicken nugget night. Oh, oh I would love some chicken nuggets, Wiki Nomad. You're making me think maybe I could order them. But no, I'm not I'm supposed to be on my, I'm supposed to be going back to my diet. All right. But it's been a really long day. Okay. Oh, Heather also loved Little Women. It was great. Oh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Damien says, did you see the new Renaissance trailer? It looks so motivational. I'm still hoping you'll be able to review it. No pressure though. Well, Damien, I didn't review the Taylor Swift movie. I don't really know if concert movies are my wheelhouse. Uh, but I hope it does well. I really want to say, see Beyonce get close to, if not match, Taylor Swift's debut because it's not going to be cool for her if she doesn't. Uh, Peter Odinson says, hey, Grace, where do you think Spider-Man 4 will fall as Sony usually drops? Ah, uh, where'd it go? Oh, my goodness. Uh, drops their movies randomly in Marvel's established slate. Also, thanks for this late night stream from Australia. Oh yeah, it's probably pretty good time for you. I'm not sure about Spider-Man 4. I don't think they've even put the deal together yet, right? I mean, they've, the writers, I think, were working on it a little bit, but um, I think it's still very, very far away. 80s model, I don't like to say what my next planned videos are because then I sometimes don't put them out and then people are sad. Uh, so um, I'm really working hard to get back on track. A lot of reviews next week. I was maybe going to review Scott Pilgrim, but I don't know if I have time and I don't know if I want to get in on that. They basically, I can't even say, but I don't, the reaction to Scott Pilgrim, I don't think is going to be great. Let's see here. Leroy says, hey, Grace, did you ever hear the comparison of you as a modern day Pauline Kael? If so, was she an influence on you as a critic? Uh, no one has ever said that about me, but I'm flattered that you would. Pauline Kael, for those of you who don't know, I believe, right? She was uh, like one of the first major female critics for the New York Times. Uh, I would be thrilled to be mentioned in the same sentence as her. Um, she is, uh, she, but I did not know about her before I became a critic. Uh, but so she did not influence me at all. Also, I think I'm very different than a traditional critic. Uh, so, so she didn't influence me, uh, but um, uh, I do certainly have a lot of respect for her and admiration. Miss Bubble says, side note, as a former suicide hotline worker, you do a great job validating people's feelings. Even, even when you disagree, they feel seen and heard. Well, first off, Miss Bubbles, I didn't know that you did that. That is just so wonderful of you. Uh, and thank you very much. I really try. I try so hard, um, and I've become very aware of that. Uh, I think that, you know, that takes some training, as of course I'm sure you know, and I'm sure your training is much more extensive and uh, formal. But I would say that my experience uh, being online so much and interacting with so many different people has kind of opened my eyes to that and to other people's life experiences, uh, which I think has been extremely uh, educational and moving for me uh, and has really given me a better context of what some people are going through, uh, especially these days. So I, I really tried it to, and also, you know, because sometimes I'm on the receiving end of some pretty crappy behavior, I want to make sure I don't do that to anybody else. Love says, do you think Arcane will suffer from the three-year wait like Invincible is struggling? Yeah, I do. I think these delays are a problem. And I think Invincible, I don't know. I think, I think Invincible, yeah, it's a really long delay. Um, and I think that Invincible is not as shocking a show. I think, and also, you know, it's not like The Boys, where The Boys, even though they're having a little bit of a delay, The Boys, every episode is just like, you got to talk about it. Uh, and also, of course, they, they're lucky enough to have Homelander. Um, and I think they're getting some other characters that they're building up to be just as popular. But I think that Invincible only has Omni-Man, and Omni-Man is only really in the first and, and well, maybe, maybe one of the later episodes. And so I think everybody's not really going to talk about the show until the final episode of this part one, and that's when I'm planning to do another breakdown. Stardust490 says, do you intend, did you intend to look like the Scarlet Witch? And I did not! But I appreciate that. Look at me, Pauline Kale in the Scarlet Witch today. I feel very nice. You guys are making me feel great. David loved the killer. Oh, that's great. 
SMR Goose, as I said, my Napoleon screening is on uh, Tuesday. I've been trying to see awards films, but I have so much to do. I've been canceling others. I've been canceling some of my screenings. Like I was supposed to see Poor Things next week. I don't got time for that. I just don't because of all the other stuff that's going on. Danny, I hope you enjoy the Marvels. And it is a party, Pixie Mermaid. Cosmic says, will you be watching the uh, Grand Theft Auto trailer next month? Um, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to stick to gaming when it jumps into my area. Let's see here. Oh, I'm excited for Napoleon too, Simmy. I'm pretty excited for Tuesday. Owen says, hey, Grace, thank you for always brightening my day with your streams and videos. Have you, conduct, have you been conducting interviews for my website? Or you have been, and you are an inspiration. Ah, oh, thanks. I'm so glad, Owen. And that's great for you. I'm so happy for you that you're doing that. Saito, I don't think Loki is ending with season two. I mean, the head writer said it, but the producer said no. Said there's definitely a potential for a season three. I mean, let's see how the ratings do. Right now, the ratings are like only, eh, we'll talk about it on Movie Math on Sunday. Lord Baratheon says, how do you think Wish will do? I got to see it. I'm not, I'm not going to, I can't go to the press screening next week because I have a conflict. So I'm going to go to it next Saturday and I'll review it after that. Uh, but I think it could do okay. I'm kind of getting excited about it. And so maybe. Liam says, do you think Miles Morales will take over um, for Tom Holland in the next Spider-Man movie? I don't know. I, I would not want him to do that. I would like him to have his own movie, and then you have Peter Parker have his own movies, and then they can just alternate every few years. Oh, Jacob, I'm so glad you enjoyed the Marvels, too. See, everybody likes it. I mean, everybody agrees it's not the best movie ever made, but it's still fun. Whelm says, Lady Gaga is Harley Quinn, and Taylor Swift is Poison Ivy. No, Whelm, Taylor Swift would be an awful Poison Ivy. Hey, D. Williams. Um, let's see here. Danny, I couldn't get my parents to see the Marvels. Maybe I can get them to watch it on streaming. Although I got them to watch Loki episode one of season two and they didn't care for that. So I'm having a hard time getting them back into Marvel. Duke, I did see about Arcane. I'm very excited about it. Oh, like I'm only at the Nuggets discussion. Uh, thanks for gifting a membership, 80s model. I'll watch. I'm going to try real hard not to skip Trolls. And then Tony DeLott says, greetings from Mexico. Ah, and thank you, Tony. That's very generous of you. Evan Moore says, do memberships like AMC A-List affect the box office? No, I think because they give them like the $7 they're supposed to get. Uh, hey, Malala. Wandering Seth says, you're not a critic, Grace. You're an analyst. Well, that's not totally true because I am a movie reviewer and I do do movie reviews. I am a Rotten Tomatoes critic, but I would say I definitely am an analyst as well. And I do factor that into my reviews. Stardust says, hey, Grace, can you do any impressions? Uh, I can, I can do accents and funny stuff like that, but I can't do any impressions. Ramsey says in 2024, an overall, is, overall, is it an overall light year for Disney? It is. I was looking at what options Disney had for the first weekend of the summer. And I was like, they don't got a lot. Jesse the Goodwitch says, uh, not your thing, but have you watched Naked Attraction on Max? Uh, no, I, you know, I got to tell you, Housewives has got pretty trashy for me. I don't know if I can get trashier than that. And Drago says, hi, Grace. Was the sag after strike really worth it from the studio's perspective? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it did suck for them, right? Uh, and they did end up giving the actors most what they wanted. But I guess now they know for sure that they can't break them. Casey, I haven't kept up with the new Frasier, but I'm so glad to hear that it's pretty good. Maybe I'll go back and revisit it. I can see all of you encouraging me to get the nuggets. Danny, I'm not, I don't have a day off tomorrow. I've got to work. I'm going to do these uh, Marvels videos. Uh, Blair Wraith says, any furiosity? No, I haven't heard anything about that. Uh, John Thrasher says, Grace, on behalf of all of us, this is for your order of nuggets. Ah, thank you. That's really nice. You guys are really making me think I should order the nuggets. Hmm. Oh, it's 9.06. I better get going so I don't eat too late. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Greg Lazaro says, the Marvel's discourse reminds me of the 19, uh, Wonder Woman 1984 discourse. But I think that Wonder Woman 1984 was not as good as film as the Marvel's. I think the Marvel's is a better movie. I mean, I liked Wonder Woman 1984 uh, in spite of its problems. Uh, I didn't think its problems would da would torpedo it to the degree that it did, but I think The Marvels is a better movie than Wonder Woman 1984. All right, let me do some quick shout outs. 
Did somebody gift something? Hold on. Okay, I think we're pretty much caught up. I can't cover Godzilla minus one, Malala. I'm so sorry. I just don't have the time. 50 pence. I guess I imitate, I can do a robot impression. <laughs> the robot's like, I sound nothing like that. <laughs> Midnight Bart says, saw the Marvels and had a lot of fun. Thanks for the review. My pleasure. I'm so glad that I could make some, of, I could encourage some of you to go. Oh, Evan Moore is at a bar in Pittsburgh. Oh, I love it. Pittsburgh. Woohoo. Uh, Carter B, I love you too. Okay, quick shout outs. Matt's coming at me from Michigan as usual. Nice to see you as always. Heather says, about to log on to work. Jacob says, I agree that the, the Wonder Woman 1984 was good, but not as good as the Marvels. Um, Andrew is doing deep cleaning in Chicago. Thank you for trying your hardest with us for your coverage. Oh, it's my pleasure. I love you guys. I really do. And I love talking movies with you. I mean, really. And thank you for allowing me to do it. Wiki Nomad is on the nugget train. Oh, is it Alexander's birthday? Oh, yeah. Is that a person who talked about it being their birthday? Vincent says, spending the night with Grace. That's funny, Vincent. Sibu Sisu says, please tweet us if you end up getting the nuggets. Uh, and Linda Jordan says, just finished packing for my Bahamian cruise. Wow. Have a good time, Linda. I'm glad we could keep you company. Oh, it looks like you might be packing. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I hope you're ready. That's going to be great. You're getting ready for fun. SMR Goose is binging in Florida, while Mike Drop is building a flower wall for a wedding this weekend. Oh, what a cool, I don't know if that's your job or you're just doing it to be nice, Mike Drop, but that's really cool. Harry Smith says, 2 a.m., snoozing here in Manchester. Well, it's Saturday, right? So that's okay. Uh, CJ's having Chinese tonight, so he says, get the nuggets. We'll, we'll be snacking together. And Randall said, your positive review of the Marvels is what actually has me excited about it. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I hope you have a great time. Noah is cleaning his room in Los Angeles. Love it. You're going to feel great tomorrow that you got that done. D. Williams says, watching you from Miami before I go out. Oh, it's going out. Oh, it's 9 o'clock for you. You're pretty cool, D. You're going out late. I love it. Um, Malala says, there was another part to my comment. I'm sorry. I missed that. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. David Q is shopping for groceries. I've been there late at night. My pleasure to keep you company. And Mystic says, good morning from the other side of the globe. It's already Saturday for you. Where Pokemon, uh, Pokemon only fan, that's funny, is playing Diablo 4 in Munich. Well, SM, that sounds fun. And S, that's pretty late. Uh, and SMR Goose says, you guys in the community have a great weekend. Love you guys. Aw. Well, Reflection says, shopping at Walmart and taking you with me in Ontario. Oh, that's awesome. What aisle are we in? Uh, that's great. And then says, Ricardo says, watching the Marvels tomorrow. Love from Brian and Ricardo in Edinburgh. Oh, I always love hearing from you guys. All right, I better get going. I had a great time as always with you, and I will talk to you very soon. Uh, because I have so much to do on Monday and Tuesday of next week, the live streams will be on Thursday, fr uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week. Uh, I'm still shooting for three, but it'll be at the end of the week. All right, everybody, bye. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye.